Back in the days when we mic check, we would take someone's song and make it our song. We would take their words that they've sang on the song and make it our songs. And, and one of the guys who I think was as excellent as a DJ Chip man. It's peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly was a dance that was popular in Miami. It wasn't a full song. It was just peanut butter jelly. It wasn't no uh, with baseball and none of that. Just peanut butter jelly. And I'm like, bro, we, we gotta make this a real song. Great over to hit. And I went up there and did. Originally, we made the song just for us to play as DJs because everybody was trying to follow what Atlanta was doing. Everybody was trying to be slow with the crumb music. And we like, shit, down south, a bitch wants to shake ass. We was doing the Haitian festival and they liked it. My boys made up a dance too and I said, okay. So after that day, the next day, we just went on here, put it on wax. It was, it was on from there. We took that shit to the studio. We cooked it up, whipped it up. And it was peanut butter jelly time after that. We got into this culture so hard that the DJs started making records. We was already rocking the parties. You had a lot of DJs that made that transition to making records. Like I remember um, Luke, ghetto style DJ, they made a song called Throw the Dick. That song took off down here. Then you had Triple M DJ. They came out with a song called Triple M Bass. When I first heard Jam Pony make an album and heard the cuts on that thing, I was like, damn, Jam Pony boy, they ain't just ain't on mixtapes no more. They put it on wax. Then God bless the dead Uncle Lau. When he put his records together, them shits were live. The party was on a song. You could put that shit on. If you were a DJ and couldn't jam, you could put on him Uncle Lau song and that thing was riding for you. Uncle Al making records. You know, that, that was a big change in my daddy's life. You know, he really took that seriously. Okay, I was doing this thing with making the records, doing the DJing, and it all go hand in hand. Like, Chip, man, you got, uh, when Crazy Legs, really Crazy Legs was, was DJing. All these guys from back in the days, they were DJing, and now they take that same energy, and, and they, I guess they realize that, listen, I'm making my own song anyway when I come to mic checking. So then they turned it on and made some, some of them made some hit songs. Most of the time, it was all about the DJ putting that beat together and on that breakdown on every break us rocking that beat. Luke would come on the record just, he would DJ. Basically what Luke was doing in the background was DJing. Can't nobody make a record like a DJ. When you a DJ, you see what everybody want to listen to. You see what everybody jipping to, what everybody vibing to. So as a DJ, you want to make music that they going to vibe to. You might find a, a, a beat from a, from something way throw back. And shit, we combine that with something that's something that's popular, a dance that's popular. And shit, we put it on wax, it's easy. And it's not just making people dance on other people's song. Eventually you're gonna make your own song because it's in your heart just to make people dance. And that's what it's about when you make records. Especially records down here in Miami. You know, it's the home of booty shaking, so we wanna make you dance. Make music to cater to our sound so we can get put on the street and be heard all around. So I uh, was at the gym, Dixie Park Gym in the neighborhood where I grew up, and computer funk was out. So I went in there and they had the speakers all up on the stage, big wall of speakers like you normally see associated with the DJ crew. And they were playing computer funk, and man, that thing was hitting really hard. Even though it wasn't a bass song, it was a, a electro techno song. That 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 Oberheim kick and that Oberheim uh, bass pattern on there was just as good as any other record that was out. 